A common thing that you see is that if a user's credentials are fished, the attacker will normally log into the mailbox and then set up um, some email forwarding rules so that they can basically perform reconnaissance on the user and on the organization. So best practice is to regularly check mailboxes to make sure they don't have forwarding rules that are unexpected. Now, what I've done previously is I have set up and made available for free a number of scripts to uh, do this that are written in PowerShell. Now, there is some challenges with the PowerShell environment. So the very first thing you're going to need to do is you're need, going to need to go in there and firstly connect to this case, uh, Exchange Online. So what I'm going to have to do here is I'm going to have to log into my tenant, all right, through the normal uh, process that you would go through, uh, including uh, any two-factor authentication. So this is simply just connecting me up to Exchange Online so that I can then run uh, PowerShell commands. Now, once I've made that connection successfully, then I have the ability to go in and custom command. So this is the custom script that I've written that will go through and check uh, basically all the mailboxes here. So you'll see here that it's running through all the mailboxes in my tenant and it's looking for a number of different ways that emails can be forwarded uh, out of that environment. That can be a mailbox forward, that can be uh, inbox rules, and that can also be sweep technology. Now this uh, script, all these scripts you see here are freely available. You can download those from my uh, GitHub repository, which I'll show you towards the end of the video there and they are still probably the best way to actually go and test for this environment. Now, the challenge with this is obviously PowerShell can be a bit involved to set up and, and, and uh, can also prove difficult for people to get configured. So with that in mind, what I've done is I've gone out and created what I think is a much simpler process. Now, I've written a blog post about it. Again, this is the 16th of April, so you can go and have a search on the date or again, have a look at this uh, article here that goes through it in detail. Now, the thing that you'll need to do to uh, get this to operate is simply to uh, download um, the file that I have uh, provided. So basically, you'll find it here again in my GitHub repository. It's called graph-mbx-rules.exe. Just click on that and download that to your uh, environment. Now, when you have downloaded that, you'll see that you get a single exe, which you can put anywhere, and we can now execute. Now, before you do run it, the only thing I would suggest that you need to uh, make sure of is you need to basically make sure that you've uh, installed the Azure AD PowerShell module uh, in your environment, and you can do this by running this command you see here uh, via an elevated PowerShell uh, environment. So once you've run that, you should be good to go, and you can then run this program without any issues. Now, once you've downloaded the file, all you need to do is to just double click on it to uh, get the program to execute. Now, you'll see what it does. You'll see that it basically runs a compiled version of uh, PowerShell in the background here. So what I'm going to do is it's going to request that I log into my tenant. So I need access to go in there and basically create uh, what's called an access token. So this is what's called an Azure AD app. That Azure AD app will then be given a certain range of permissions to read the user details, their mailbox, their folders and whatever, so we can create our report. So you'll see here that it's actually going in and creating uh, that application and it's calling it uh, via this name here. So we re we'll remember that for later on. So it's creating that, adding permissions, and now it's prompting us whether we want to open the browser to perform consent. Now, one of the challenges with this environment is at this point in time is that consent can only be given through uh, the web. We can't do it programmatically. So that means that to actually approve the permissions that have been added by the app here, I'm going to have to log into my tenant via the web and then that should take me to a site where I can examine and potentially approve those permissions that are required to complete the process. So here you'll see that firstly uh, it's prompting me that this application here which ends in 2.8 wants these rights. So if we go back to our program here, you'll see that in fact that is exactly the same app, so we know that matches. And if we go back and have a look here, you'll see that all the permissions that are being requested are read. There's no write permissions there, so this app is only going to read information, it's not going to make any changes to the environment. Now I have to accept that, so that will then set the permissions in that 
uh, application there and then I can go and complete what I need to back in the program. So once you've uh, done this, you can close this browser. But the other good thing here is if you need to is, let's just say you already have a window open and you want to use that rather than the default browser, well, then the program will also basically um, copy that URL into the clipboard so you can, again, put it into any browser you may be working with, working with at the time. Now, once we have given consent, we need to return to the program here and we need to confirm that we have given consent so it knows. Now, because the web consent can, uh, again, be a little bit of a delay because it's through the web, uh, we will wait an additional 10 seconds here just to make sure that that does complete. The program will continue on and then you'll see it stream through um, all the mailboxes there. So it will complete that process. So let's just scroll up and have a quick look at what it's done. It's worked its way through all the mailboxes. If it finds any mailbox rules, it will basically let you know what the rule name is, the action that it's taking. So what's the rule actually doing and whether it uh, terminates processing after this rule. So it will basically record all those, report all of those, and then it will continue through all of the mailboxes. You'll notice you'll get uh, a warning here that there was no mailbox found for this user and they are skipped. The last thing here you'll notice before the program terminates is that it will remove that application, right? So what it's going to do is it will actually move that app that it has created so it leaves a clean environment. So once we've finished here, all we need to do basically uh, is hit enter to terminate the program. And one, once we've done that, you'll see that we have two text files. So the graph-mbx-rules text file, if we open that, what that gives us is the first part of a log for the program. So that tells us about uh, the creation of the Azure AD app. And the second one here, mbxrules.txt, you'll see that gives us um, our output and the results that we saw on the screen. Now, a point to note here that if the mailbox isn't found, we typically get uh, this sort of error here. This is just recorded uh, via PowerShell. Don't need to worry about it. You can delete that uh, out of your results there to tidy it up if you need to. But at this stage, um, it's easier to have that in there um, at the moment. Hopefully, we, I can fix that in upcoming versions of this file. Now, because I've simplified this greatly, I also want to uh, basically uh, let you know of how this works in the background so that you can have confidence to use it. Now, the way that you can see what's going on here is if you go into the Azure AD for the tenant uh, that you ran that uh, program against, so go into Azure AD here, and then what we need to do is we need to go down and have a look at the audit logs. Now, in the audit logs here, what we want to focus on uh, firstly is the uh, category, and we also want to focus on the activity, right? So let's scroll down a bit here and you'll see that, again, we've got an option here that adds an application, right? So let's have a look at that. So what you'll see here is that uh, that will be a record of the application that we just added to the environment. So again, there's that, the name of it, it ends in 2.8. So there's that application that is being added. You'll see that it does number of updates. You'll see that it also goes in here and adds a number of permissions, right? So it's gonna add those permissions. And then as we scroll up through this a bit further, you'll see here's the request for consent. So that is the approval that we went through uh, on the web page there. And then you'll see the last thing that it does is it goes in and removes that application. We look at the target address and again, you'll see it ends in 2.8 there. So it will create this uh, app in Azure, do what it needs to do, and it will then delete the app when it's finished. So it will leave a clean environment. And like I said, the uh, file, the files here will give you the results. If you missed it on the screen, you can run it again uh, if you want, and it will create a new app, new permissions, and then delete that again when it's complete. So it will make sure it's a clean environment. If you do want to read more about the script, you can, again, search my blog for uh, this title here. That will show you a breakdown that you can read through. The other place I'll point you to is my GitHub repository, which you'll find at github.com slash director CIA. All the scripts and the programs that I've mentioned today are in the Office 365 repository. So go in there and have a look and see what is available. So if you want to uh, run the older one, which will require you setting up a PowerShell environment, doing it interactively, you can do that. Or you can, again, just download uh, this single file here and use that to uh, basically run as I've just shown you. Okay, so they're all in that GitHub repository. 
uh, slash director CIA slash office 365. So hopefully that'll give you uh, some tools that you can use to look at automating the process of uh, checking your environment for uh, forwarding rules, which may not be ex expected. Thank you very much for watching the video.